nerds and nerdettes and we little nerdlings all. It's your buddy Big John and G the Two Gun Fixit presents Legendary Gaming. Midday Monologue Monday, the end of the month. This is the time when I get to delve and dive deep into the comments and find out what you have to say. And then you get to find out what I have to say back. And you get to do it live. You get to get to see me while I'm saying it. You get to hear me. You get to experience my inflections and my tone. So much better than just the written text, don't you think? I think it's more personal. <laughs> so thank you so much. It's been a fantastic month. Uh, September has gone by so fast. And wow, we had so many comments. Uh, I think we had more comments this month than we have had any month at all. Uh, so this might take me a while to get through. Uh, I don't know. Is it going to be a two-parter? I mean, how long can I let this run? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Maybe I'm going to have to start doing a, a mid-month mail uh, check-in or something. <sighs> but for right now, everyone, why don't we just get down to the table, and you and me are going to discuss the comments. All right? Thank you very much, everyone. I I'll see you down the table. Thank you for joining us and coming here to check out some of these comments. So the first one up is from a couple of weeks ago. We had a Tabletop Takeout Tuesday for a Hero Quest update. Everything we know so far. We had a few comments on them, uh, so we'll be coming back to this again, I'm sure. But for right now, we had a comment which was someone I believe is a is a is a new is a new watcher, a new friend of ours here. Uh, I don't recognize the name, but Andvari, hope I'm saying that right, Andvari said, if Toby Maguire hadn't beaten up Joe in school that day, he may have pursued a jock career and we wouldn't be getting all this cool stuff. <laughs> I like your, your, your little joke, your little mention here, your take on that. Uh, going way back to Toby Maguire's first Spider-Man movie, and also... Is this an appropriate comment, right? With uh, the possibility of Toby being in the new Spider-Man movie as well? Hmm. <laughs> but no, that's a very, very cute comment. Thank you very much. I, I, I like that. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the episode. Uh, I, I know, uh, and it gets mentioned later on, I know I, I, I dropped this, and then like two days later they made some big announcements. And it's just like, oh, if I just waited a couple more days to do the video. Uh, we did an unboxing from WizKids, and our buddy Little Will wrote, This looks fun. Well, if you want to know what he's talking about, you're going to have to go check out that video. But I do believe that this is on the schedule for this week. Maybe next week. i got to double check the schedule. Uh, but yes, if this is the WizKids game, I, re I remember it's supposed to be that you're talking about. It's uh, coming up in like a week or two. This week or next week. So keep your eye out for that, Will. Now, again, little Will, our buddy, made a comment on our Pixie playthrough of Die in the Dungeon. I'm up to Chapter 3. I'm running the campaign version of the game using Troll of Bones to go hunt the murder hobo adventurers running through my uh, die master's uh, dungeon. That's been going pretty fun. In fact, so much so, he said, love this game. And you should. Hey, well, first of all, it's by a fellow Canadian. So you should have a little bit of pride in that alone. And I, I, you know, I shouldn't even phrase it like that because I know a little Will. I know you, and I know you do have pride. That's a fellow Canadian that came out with that game. Uh, yeah, check that game out a little bit more. I have a few more playthroughs of it. Uh, and please go check out the Fundamental Games' uh, own site. Uh, they have a few other games also that uh, I think are a lot of fun, and we've played them here. You've seen a few of them, I think. 
very cool. So just, uh, wow, at this point, I think it was just last week, uh, I, I ran a game of Desolate by Grey Gnome Games, a sci-fi horror game, a solo game, and uh, I, I believe this is a new, a new friend of ours. I hope it's a new subscriber. I don't recognize this name. If, if you have commented before, I apologize for forgetting about it, uh, but it looks like there is a comment by, uh, am I saying this name right? Pascalis Antonio. Pascalis Antonio. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not butchering your name. Uh, but as far as the Desolate game goes, which I played with the, uh, the, the, the one expansion pack for Dark Matters, there's two. I played with the first one. And he said, great game. Uh, it really is. Thank you for thinking so. Um, I, I must have made a mistake while I was playing because I actually won that game. Uh, and I usually don't win my live games, so it makes me think I think I did something wrong. But it, I don't recall doing anything wrong, really, in the game. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And please go check out Grey Gnome Games. I I love what I've played from them so far. If you like this and you're also a fan of fantasy, then definitely you're going to need to check out Iron Helm by them, which is pretty much this engine uh, just uh, tweaked a little bit and put in a fantasy setting. And that's, that's really fun. i got to get that on camera again, too. It's been a while since I've played that. But thank you for checking out the video. I hope you subscribe. I hope there's enough material here that I do that you enjoy. All right. Thank you very much. Now, uh, wow, this is going back. This is an old, this is an old video. I, I can tell right away from the thumbnail because it's my first generation style thumbnail. from so the first year and a half that I was doing videos. That's like five years ago at this point. Maybe five and a half. Uh, so for what's in the Pixies box number 97. Yeah, I was numbering them back then. Number 97, the Fountain of Youth and Other Adventures. I also didn't make it like a total surprise. I told you exactly what it was, like most of the other unboxings do. But I, I've come to like the surprise value of it. But anyway, so uh, Mad Dog Walt, Mad Dog Walt, uh, made a comment. Love Expedition. Not got to the city yet, though. Solo just bought the expansion. Not tried yet. Great video. Cheers. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Mad Dog. In fact, this is another game that uh, you're going to be seeing. I, I, I think this one is this week. I think this one is uh, is actually this week on the schedule. Which of course, I don't have handy. I left my notebook in the other room. Hate when I when I don't have my notebook uh, on me at all times. Uh, but yeah, that is. Uh, I'm pretty sure that game is going to be this uh, this week. Pro uh, probably that's going to be a Friday night filler game. So well, every Monday morning, uh, some point time between six and nine a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time uh, on Facebook and Twitter, I drop Two Gun Pixie's weekly schedule of what's airing and what time on what day. So check us out on, on Facebook and or Twitter, and you'll be able to see the whole lineup every Monday of what's going to be happening for the whole week. As far as I know, nobody else does that. At least no other board gamers do anything like that. Uh, but here you go. This is for all of you. And it makes it easier for me, too, to a degree. But you can keep track of everything. So check it out. Uh, that's going to be this week or next week, but I think it's this week. <laughs> All right, now from uh, Tabletop Takeout. Oh, this is another one from the Hero Quest update. Everything we know so far. I told you this is going to be a few of them uh, sprinkled around. I uh, I just I was I was really in a rush, and uh, this is going up tomorrow. Actually, this is going up in like less than twelve hours. I got to finish filming this and editing it, so I didn't. Uh, I just grabbed everything in the order that they were left in. I didn't grab them in the order of the videos. So, you're going to see this again sprinkled around, and you're going to see some of the other videos that are going to come up here and there, too. It's not going to be all boxed together conveniently, so I apologize for that. Uh, but, yeah, so anyway, uh, for the Tabletop Takeout Hero Quest update, we have from Gore Freak 1970 RB. <laughs> and he says, I must. Have oh, I'm with you on that. Oh, oh, my man, right here. We are like this, my man. Yeah, 
That's that's why as soon as I saw this game, uh, boy, boy, at this point, what was it? Late, late last year, uh, I, I knew there was no question about it, and I knew not only that, but I knew that I had to get the mythic tier level. Right? Come on, let's let's be real. Why? Okay, other than I, I know. I don't know everyone's wallet situation. I understand that. But come on. If you're going to get the game, why why would you not get the Mythic tier? You and me, man. We see eye to eye on this. <laughs> and we have a, oh, he's another one back-to-back. -back. There are a couple back-to-back. -back. What do you know? Oh, actually, I think this is the trend. I remember when I was just cutting and pasting this and emailing it to myself because I can't read it off my phone because I film everything off my phone. Uh, there was like a whole strand. Oh, I think this is where the strand starts. Not the strand bookstore. Although it's an awesome place if you happen to be in, in uh, New York City. No, they didn't pay me to say that. I just honestly think it's an awesome place. So here's another one by John. I say the name, right? But I love your first name, buddy. So uh, John Piernicki. Piernicki? Piernicki, John Piernicki. He said, so glad that Joe Matt, oh, I gotta, I gotta say that last name. I, I butcher his last name every time I try to say it. If it meets me in real life, he's gonna knock my teeth down my throat. Uh, so glad that Joe Mangamelu and Hasbro came through with the crypt of perpetual darkness. It's going to be epic. I put the pause in there, he didn't. <laughs> But you're absolutely right. Uh, so, uh, and this is going to come up in another one. Actually, it might be the next uh, comment up, maybe. Uh, there's going to be actually mentioned that I uh, I messed up. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, no, that isn't it yet. So, yeah, one of these comments is going to be about how I, I dropped this video, or well, that video, about what we know so far. And, like, two days later, Hasbro made an announcement. And I was like, ah. Oh. Somebody called me out on it. All right, but right now is also a comment by Dice Zero. I don't know Dice Zero. So I, I'm welcome. Welcome to Two Gun Pixie. All of you, welcome. Welcome. Dice Pixie says, oh, this is a long one. Says, <laughs> so right after I backed the Mythic Tier, there was a question regarding retail resale. That's something I brought up in the video that I wasn't sure about, but I had heard some mixed things about. So, uh, Day Zero says, I contacted Hasbro CS and was told, now mind you, it was about a year ago, that it would not be released via retail at all, which I couldn't hardly believe. As you said, it would be a dick move. I, that is a quote from me. <laughs> like I said, like you said, it would be a dick move. As of recent, they did announce that all unlocks would be available to Mythic tier backers and release date would be mid to late October. I assume that they were worried that the backers would be a little perturbed that the release was pushed back. So that's why they release all unlocks. IDK. I don't know either. But yeah, that is interesting. Wow, you so you uh, you actually contacted them to find out, and they flatly said, "See, there's been a mix of reports that I've read from uh, from other reviewers and seen right here on YouTube from other reviewers. Uh, there does seem to be a little bit of divide of what people are hearing about the retail, and also there's a divide about where where I've heard different stories about retail sales in Europe and about and that are different than possibly in the Americas and Canada." I don't know what's going on either, but it's really interesting. And thank you. Thank you for bringing this up and leaving the comment for everyone to see. That was very cool of you, uh, Dice Zero. Uh, but yeah, I, it would be. It would be a complete Richard move. <laughs> it would be a complete Richard move if they did that. Because this game is almost, arguably, but I believe almost, as asked for and wanted and desired as Dark Tower was. There is such a huge demand for people that both remember it, like myself, and the people that want to know what the hell this was about, that that old grognards like me and, and you, I don't know about you personally, but one of you watching this at least, I know most of my fans are in my age category, so most of us are grognards here. They want to know what the hell we were talking about. Why did we love this? Why did this tear us away from our D&D &D games? 
So there's a huge market for it. So it wouldn't, wouldn't just be a Richard move if they didn't put it in retail. It would be a financially stupid move for them. Especially right now. Everyone needs to make as much money as they can still. It's not like everything is back to normal. So yeah, it would be a Richard move for, for them to do to us and themselves. But yeah, very cool. Thanks for adding that information uh, for everyone to see down in the comment section of that video. Very cool, Dice Zero. Hope we see you around in the comment section again. Now, we also have a comment on that same video by Yuli Dubav... Oh, boy. Sorry. <laughs> Dubavik. Dubavik? Dubavik. Pam, 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 Dubavik. Sorry. <laughs> Yuli... Yuli, Yuli, Yuli. <sighs> I'm so I'm sorry. I've got such an ugly American mouth. Uh, but you said, have you played or heard of Mutant Crawl Classics RPG? Would you do a video review? I watched a few channels to learn more about it and kept catching myself thinking that I would love to hear your review of it. Also, I understand you're busy, but wanted to drop it in the comments just in case it gets you to look into it. That's very, very cool of you. Uh, and I did take a look at this. Uh, when you first dropped it about a week ago, I, uh, I saw it on my alert, and I did a Google search, and I had recognized it once I saw it. I'd seen it in, in The Complete Strategist before, I believe. I'm almost positive. That's my local uh, uh, hobby RPG store here in New York City. I'm pretty sure I had seen that in there once I had seen what you were talking about. But regardless of where, I had seen it before. But no, I don't know anything about the game at all. Now... We do very few RPGs here. I know you may have seen something on Four Against Darkness, uh, uh, Alone Against Fear. Yes, I, I do uh, have done those games. Those are very light RPGs. But this didn't seem like a heavy RPG. What I'm getting at is I, I, I might not be able to get to it right away. It looked very interesting. And I definitely want to give it a shot, give it a try. Uh, and if it's cool, and I think it's... That's the wrong way to put it. Not that I think it's cool. Forget I said that. That was just easy words. I weren't even thinking about what I was saying. If I have enough fun with the game, then yeah, I'd love to do a video on it. Uh, with some sort of review or playthrough or, or whatever I end up feeling like I want to do, I, I will definitely do something. So I'm going to look a little bit more into it. But I mean, at this point, it's definitely not happening for the remaining few months uh, this year. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I'm going to look into it, so maybe next year something about the um, Mutant Crawl Classics you'll you'll be able to see up here on 2GB. 2 so thank you very much for reaching out and letting us know about that. Now continuing this uh, this long thread on that one video about everything we know so far in HeroQuest, uh, we have one from Retro Revival Super Turbo. Digging that name, brother. <laughs> So this was, uh, this was uh, we got the Mythic tier level in the UK through a store called Zavi. Z-A-V-V-I, Zavi. I'm hoping that we also get the dragon, as it was mentioned a few days ago, that they were now going to throw it into the Mythic tier level. It would have been nice as well to get the extra gender swap miniatures for the Warlock and Druid. I know! I was thinking that! The entire time! The entire time I'm like, you know, if they're going to go this far as to give us these cool extra characters, these new heroes for us to, to, to try and start with and adventure with right from the get-go before we have to wait for further uh, expansions or whatever, that is awesome. But you're going to all this problem, all this trouble. Well, is it a lot of trouble? Is it a lot of problem? I don't know. But you're spending money to give us extra miniatures for a gender swap. Okay, that's cool. But why are you not doing it for all of them? Why? How come the extra heroes aren't going to have this? Uh, that feels like we're getting gypped just a little bit to me. I'm glad you mentioned it because, as you can see, it kind of kind of irked me a little bit too. <laughs> now, uh, again, we have a comment for this video by Shadzar, 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 Shadzar. I believe it is. It said when a YouTuber. Oh, this is the one I was talking about. This is this is good, good. I uh, I gotta I'll give you props there. I'll give you props there. You were right. You were right on it. Uh, his comment was, or hers, I'm not sure, the viewer's comment, 
was when a YouTuber makes a video one or two days too early before giant news on the subject breaks. Yeah, if I'd only waited a couple of days. C'est la vie, mon amours. C'est la vie. <laughs> Vagabond John. Nice to meet you. Thanks for the comment. Vagabond John said, uh, Has Lab just included the dragon and the crypt of perpetual darkness to all mythic tier pledges? <laughs> yeah, if I had waited a day or two, I would have had that information on uh, my video as well. Oh well, you can't win them all, but uh, I'm glad to see everyone's as excited about it as I am. <laughs> Theo Fatel, thank you for the comment and the watch, says the best thing about Hero Quest is having. Did I said that right. Yes, I did. Sorry. The best thing about Hero Quest is having a 3D printer to make your own Hero Quest. Yeah, it's making us all jealous a little bit there, are you? That actually does sound pretty cool, though. I saw a, uh, what was it? A few weeks ago, I saw a picture of a Lego Catan, I believe it was, which looks pretty cool. Uh, also, a, a, a slightly different, but on the same, on the same thought, uh, it was a Lego uh, recreation of the original cover of the Player's Handbook, the Indie Player's Handbook. That looked pretty awesome. <laughs> Now, uh, changing up, let's go to another video. So for Tabletop Takeout, I talked about why I enjoyed and loved the game Die in the Dungeon by Fundamental Games. And the creator of the game himself, uh, Wesley Woodbury, was kind enough to watch the video, uh, see what I had to say, and left the comment saying, thanks for sharing. I still love looking at the standees. Don't you? Oh, I can't stop talking about it. Every time the damn game comes up or I'm playing it or something, that's like the one thing I'm always I'm always talking about. I just love it. You, you, wow, you, you hit that out of the park. You know, thinking of that as a design, that was fantastic. Keep that up. Keep keep up thinking like that. And just whenever you got to use standees, come on, that's that's got to be that's got to be like your standard now for fundamental games. That's got to be one of the things that when people think thunder, fundamental fundamental games. Uh, be a shoot-off company for you. But when people think fundamental games, they can think of those cool, those cool acrylic, well-painted standees. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling that. <laughs> Midday monologue Monday for What's Up September. Going all the way to the top of the month here with this one from our buddy Fonzie the Capabara. <laughs> He said, was that a Who's Line reference with horror? And he even left the link. Yes, it is. Love that show. I've loved that show ever since it was the British version with, with Clive as the host. And, uh, and uh, well, a lot of the same cast was still on it. But yeah, other people you don't see anymore, like Josie Lawrence. Oh, great show. But yes, yes, that, was, uh, that wasn't the Clive, obviously. That was Drew. That was the Drew episode. Um, yeah, the horror. That was. I started messing up saying the word, and I just went with it because of that show, because of that scene. Good catch, Fonzie. Whoa. <laughs> hey. Friday night, Phil was a while back. I did a game of Tiny Epic Galaxies Blast Off, and it was my first time trying and playing the, the Blast Off uh, version of the Tiny Epic Galaxies, which is a game I, I, I totally enjoy. I love that game. And uh, so I played this through, and we had two comments from our buddy, Little Will. The first one is, I really enjoyed hearing your views and the history of Dungeons and Dragons. I, uh, when I'm playing the live games, I will, I will uh, most times, I will very much, uh, I do enjoy interacting with whoever's watching the video and making comments. And that's what happened here while playing the game. It just got, you know, you just, you start talking and the conversation just rolls in one direction. And it started talking about, uh, we got onto D and D and I think it was because I was talking about re remakes, you know, second edition, third editions, why people do, I think that's what, what uh, sparked that and just got me going off on this little bit of a rant, a little bit of a rant. On, uh, on the history of D&D and my, and my personal views, because I've lived through it. I've lived through it. I've been, I've been gaming since the Moldvay basic 
uh, D&D came out, uh, all the way up with AD&D, and I've followed it ever since. So uh, so he was very interested in hearing that. So thank you very much for, for sharing my interest in the history of the fantastic game. But he also said, uh, and this is speaking directly about Gamelin Games here and their tiny epic stuff, uh, he says, they really go all out with the printing and in their boxes. It's true, because the inside of the box, the cover is usually their, what they use for their dice tray, so they have it, you know, some sort of image, imaged out, uh, and it looks very cool, and it's nice to see, and most companies don't do it, because it is a kind of waste of money. It kind of is. They get away with, with, with justifying it because it is part of the thematics of their game. It's, it's part of the, not only that, but it's also part of the, the visualization of the game, the whole aesthetics of the game. Uh, but yeah, that's why most companies don't do it. Why? Why? It's got to save that scratch. All right, now we have a lot of comments here stringing through uh, many of the Dungeons & Dragons board games that I have I've played, I've done live uh, playthroughs of, uh, I've, I've done tabletop takeout to, uh, Tuesdays where I've talked about the games. Talked? What was that? Did you hear that? <laughs> I've talked about the games. i got a little Peter Brady on you. <laughs> and, you know, even some of the slideshows doing all on these, on these Dungeons & Dragons games. And we, uh, we've gotten a new, uh, a new friend here at Two Gun Pixie, uh, I believe uh, a subscriber. And... Uh, and it's just been very cool. Uh, and these, uh, we've got a whole bunch of comments here from Stephen Gilbert. So, good to meet you, Stephen Gilbert. Thank you for enjoying the channel and everything that we're doing here. And sharing, sharing the love of Dungeons and Dragons. That's very cool. So, for building a D&D board game collection. Oh, and I'm going to be getting back to this. There's going to be a few more building your board game collection videos uh, in some of the upcoming uh, mid, uh, Midday Monologue Mondays. Keep an eye out for them. Uh, but for this one right here, building a D&D board game collection, uh, he says, Very interesting and enjoyable to hear your thoughts here. Wife and I try to save your videos to the external hard drive and watch them on the big screen in the lounge. That way we make a TV evening of it and really enjoy your content like a nighttime feature. Ah, oh, man! That's... That is literally one of the coolest things anyone has ever said about me and the channel here. I, I honestly don't know what to say other than thank you. you. You make me feel very warm. That's so cool that you do that. That you, you actually put up with this on a big screen? Someone should send you guys medals. <laughs> For Wrath of our Shadalon Pixie playthrough, a pure excellence. Thank you, good sir. For the Pixie playthrough of Castle Ravenloft, I could I can sweep. You want to sweep? Go ahead, go sweep. But that's not what he said. He didn't say sweep. <laughs> Stephen said, I could weep with joy to see so much cool content covering the D&D adventure systems. There are not enough out there on YouTube. More, please. Well, yes, there will be more. There will be. Uh, so first of all, the uh, Ghosts of Salt Marsh is not only on the radar; it's gonna be it's gonna be making its way here. Um, I got a couple other things cooking right now, so that's probably gonna be about another month. I'm thinking before uh, that. Is it? A, is, that's a good question. Is it actually on the market yet? Since I'm not at the point ready to get it yet, I didn't even check to see if it was actually in the market yet or if it's still in the waiting period. But either way, it's going to be another couple of months before I'm able to get my hands on it. Uh, but that will be some new content for the system to watch. But besides that, I have a I have a couple of campaign games that I'm going to be getting through. And after that, I'm going to be going back here for campaign stuff. And I'm going to be changing it up. I already did a whole run you know, with uh, with with uh, the locksmiths of Dalt Guild, uh, so I'm going to change it up now, and I'm going to put together another team. I'm not sure what it is, but it's going to be another concept team. It's not going to be just your regular D and D fighter, wizard, thief. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm doing some sort of concept. I'm not sure what it is yet. Uh, I'm going to put together this 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 team for that. So that probably won't be happening until around January, February, though. Uh, if I get a chance to do anything else, any smaller things besides campaigns, I don't know. I don't know. So keep your eye out for it. But there is going to be a whole new, a whole new campaign run of this stuff. So 
thanks for thanks for enjoying all this stuff. It is a great system, isn't it? <laughs> for Dungeons of the Mad Mage again, Steven said, more, more, more! Sounds like Billy Idol. Says, more, more, more. I love it. Wife and I are utterly addicted to your channel. Well, don't tell the FDA. <laughs> I haven't been approved yet. <laughs> but I do. I think it is so it is so cool uh, that you enjoy and look forward to these videos so much. Uh, it makes it makes me feel even better that I that I do make sure to do daily content uh, to get up here for YouTube and everyone. Oh, so so awesome! Excellent channel is what you had to say for the D and D Castle Ravenloft tabletop takeout. They're all over the place here with all these. My, my God, you are watching all the videos. <laughs> That is pretty darn cool. Um, anything else here? Now we haven't gone for a while, but I think I've gotten through uh, uh, enough of these. Uh, but we are going to end with one more going all the way back to the Midday Monologue August viewers comment. So pretty much an exact month ago uh, where we had a comment from a buddy of ours, O.M. James. And uh, <laughs> this is a big comment. <laughs> Thank you, genuinely, for the compassionate words. Two Gun Pixie, the format you and Tommy V are delivering here, really highlights the beauty of what makes YouTube, YouTube. In response, if I may, you just further proved my point as far as monetization, exposure, success, and the average YouTuber goes. I have three kids, hint to my age, and yes, I remember public access television. With my oldest at 20 years old, and all three of them want to be YouTubers. I love that, as a fellow small YouTuber. But the reason I hesitate is that it's in place of a regular job. Again, there's a lot of folks who end up making money off of posting videos all the time. But one, they lose themselves to the algorithm, as you mentioned. Or two, they burn out because an income was their main goal. They're trying to benefit from the quality of the walls without ever... Walls? Am I reading that right? Two, they burn out because an income was their main goal. They're trying to benefit from the quality of the walls without ever understanding the foundation. There is so much creativity in every living being, and I honor and challenge that. Bring it on! Please expose us to it. But for you and us, not for what you can afford to throw away. There's more. Hold on. I'm going to flip to the next. <laughs> In closing, the way you speak so genuinely to your audience makes me think about podcasting. Do you guys muck around with an interview format? There's so much. There's so much there. Uh, thank you for for understanding what I was I was talking about uh, in that rant about YouTubers, the reason for YouTubing, why so many fail. It's done for the wrong reasons by the wrong people and sometimes even at the wrong time and place in their life. You understand that. And I'm I'm not saying you're the only one and I don't mean to come off surprised that anyone else understands that at all but it's nice that somebody understands that and points it out letting me know i'm not the only one like this i'm not alone in this room right so thank you for for, for pointing that out to me and letting me know that uh, i wasn't just yelling to the wind now was i uh i i i hope that you continue to enjoy what we're trying to do here, me and Tommy V. Um, actually, we got some more of me and Tommy V coming up in a few weeks. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to be editing it for, but yeah, you're going to see me, him, and a couple of the 2700 Warriors. When I don't really see us, you're going to hear us. I'm, I'm, I got something I'm, I'm cooking up. I'm having a little fun doing, but it's going to take a few weeks to hit. But um, do we do uh, an interview format or podcasting, anything like that? No. Although there's a lot of these episodes that I've really thought about how a lot of these could work just just vocally, just verbally, just audibly, that I could probably turn a lot of these 
into podcasts. Because uh, it's been pointed out to me that it, it would be nice, uh, a few people have actually pointed out that it would be nice if they could listen to these, this show, my shows, as a podcast, like while they're driving to work or taking a train to work or whatever. Uh, and I had never thought of that before. So maybe, and now you're bringing it up too, and it's coming up again and again. This is about the fourth time it's come up within the last month. Uh, maybe I should do something about that. Yeah, maybe I should. <laughs> and if I do, you all know about it, so I'll be telling you about it in the videos. <laughs> but this has been the longest one yet so far. Uh, any more comments than these come in that, that I, I feel should be directed on video, I'm going to need to break this up into two videos a month but that is not a hint to stop at all please please keep the comments coming i i love to know what you think i mean ultimately you know i'm doing this because i'm having fun and i'm doing what i want to do to have fun and that's not going to change but that doesn't mean i don't want to hear from you I, I like the banter back and forth it's very cool all right thank you for watching this video and sticking with me and subscribing to the channel and being one of our friends one of our super friends here at Two Gun Pixie. I'm your buddy Big John at G4 Two Gun Pixie. Ah, I just said that. <laughs> and I am out of here. <laughs>